Hello? 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 Hey. All right, everyone. Uh, I'd like to get you all's attention. I'm about to pray, and then MK is going to say a few words. All right, so let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, just letting us all come here to de- together. Thank you for uh, great people. Thank you for Operation Broken Science and all the great work that they're doing. I pray that uh, today we would just rejoice in the good work that you're doing through um, – Ms. Wilson and everyone else, dear Lord, I pray that we would uh, support this and that we would um, praise your name and everything that we do. In your name I pray. Amen. So I just want to thank you all for being here, but we are about to hear from a few groups tonight that are going to be singing, and then Ms. Wilson's going to speak for us at the end. So thank you all for being here. First up, we're going to have Take Note, which is the middle school a cappella group. So let's welcome Take Note. You, you light up in the dark. You're the glow and the priceless work of art. Oh, I see, I see a shining star. You're the light of the land from afar. Oh, and don't you forget, the only thing that matters is your heartbeat. Going strong. Oh, 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 don't you forget, nothing else can matter because you know where I belong. Oh, take me there, won't you take me there, won't you take me home? Oh, take me there, won't you take me there, won't you take me home? We, we light up the sky, oh, 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 heaven knows there's no such things as goodbye, oh, cause love, love can never die.
Yeah, they are so much fun. And they like self-teach themselves like 90% of that. I pretty much just give them the music and some part tracks and stuff, and they just go at it. We only meet like twice a week for like 20 minutes at a time during lunch. So they're stuffing their face with pizza and practicing at the same time. And they're really cool. So they do a good job. Um, so I, uh, I was so excited to get to do this event. Number one, just because it's great for the choirs to get to perform anytime uh, there's an audience, so it's great. Uh, but also just because uh, from the very time this organization, Operation Broken Silence, uh, spoke in chapel, they just they just really gripped my heart in so many ways. And it just, for me, has come at the same time that I feel like God has been teaching me so many things in this last year, uh, just about giving and generosity in my life. And I have a very giving wife, and so she's taught me a lot, but God has really just showed me so many things. I've just kind of had this attitude for so long of like, um, you know, uh, this idea that if I can't do something really substantial 
when it comes to giving, whether it's of my time or of my finances or whatever, that I just kind of do nothing. Um, you know, uh, whether it, even if they're, you know, passing the plate on some kind of um, charity or to give to somebody who has a need or whatever, I would think I just can't. I can't do that. I don't have enough to give to be anything significant. And that's where the Lord really started working on me is that he's just given us all different resources, different levels of time, of money, of whatever. And what he asks us to do is just to give of what he's given us. And uh, if it comes at a time in my life where I have something that I feel is significant, then that's what I should be giving. But if it also comes in a time in my life when it's, when it's where I don't feel like I have what's significant, uh, it's still what God has given me at that moment, and I should give out of what I have. And so I've come to a place where, uh, you know, whether it's um, whether it's them at school passing uh, passing a, a card around where to put some money for somebody who's got a need or they're hurting or whatever. And and if at that time in my life, if all I can give is two bucks, three bucks. Uh, before I would have never done that because I thought that's not that's just not enough to do anything. But the Lord kind of touched me and said, you know, if if that's what I've given you to have left over right now, and that's what you have in your wallet, then that's what you need to give. And just this idea of having a giving heart, and and that it doesn't have to be real significant in someone else's eyes, but if it's what I have and what the Lord is giving me in abundance even if that's what I consider to be really small, that that's what God's called me to do. And so sometimes uh, what my giving is seemingly insignificant, but as long as it's coming from a heart of being willing to let uh, generosity flow through me, whether it's through my finances or through my time or whatever it is, just that I need to be, I don't need to be stagnant. If you think of it as a pool of water, I don't need to just be stagnant where things come in, but nothing is ever flowing out. I need to be overflowing uh, because God has given me so much and he's given me so many things and that I, I should always be overflowing uh, with, with God's generosity coming to me and then that generosity coming through me to others. And even if that's in amounts that seem small to me, as long as I'm giving uh, what God has given me and what I can, then I feel like uh, God's blessed that. And God has blessed that. And he's, he's made my heart fuller as, as he's taught me to be more generous. And so, um, so when it comes to even things like this, you know, uh, and, and for all of us, that's a different thing. And, uh, and one day if I've got, um, you know, well, no, I'm not going to say that. But uh, this idea of, of wherever you are right now, if, if this is a ministry, Operation Broken Silence, which uh, is, is such a great ministry to be giving toward, even if that means uh, for you to give a small amount or what seems insignificant for you, if that's what God's given you and God has given you that abundance, then you should share with that. And I, and I encourage you not to be stagnant and that whatever God is pouring into you, you allow to be poured into others and, and great organizations like this, like Operation Broken Silence. So, um, so I just wanted to share that because when MK... Uh, talk to me the whole thing. I just felt like God's been teaching me so much about that in my own life. And so all those things just kind of collided at once. So I was happy to share that with you. Um, I also want to share with you uh, something uh, that we're doing in my family. My wife is a business owner. She's over there. Her name's Callie. She can wave. She's got our three little kids over there and she's carrying kid number four in her belly right now. So uh, but we are actually partnering. She owns a photography business, Callie Smith Photography, and we are going to be partnering with MK and with Operation Broken Silence. And what she does oftentimes is she finds a charity or a ministry or a need, and uh, she has many sessions that are coming up very soon. And what she does oftentimes, and we're going to be doing it in partnership with Operation Broken Silence, is that instead of paying a session fee for that, uh, that we, instead we are asking folks who would like to do this and would like to donate in this way uh, to write that same check that would be for the session fee and write that check to Operation Broken Silence. And then so I just say that so that if you are at a point where some pictures of your family or something like that is something that would be helpful in your life right now and that's a way that you would like to donate is by using that as a venue to donate uh, to Operation Broken Silence, then you're welcome to do that. And she's right over there. So if you'd like any information, do you have dates on that? Okay, April 20th are those mini sessions. So if that's something you're interested in, just talk with her about that. And if that's a way you would like to give, then we wanted to make that uh, opportunity available to you. So, uh, so she's right over there and she's got some information if anybody wants it. Uh, so thank you all for being here tonight. I know MK is grateful. I know... Uh, I know uh, all the students are grateful that are part of this. So I'm going to quit talking. I hope Flight is ready to go. And uh, so let me introduce to you now Flight.
Hey guys, so we're going to be singing two songs for y'all. The first one is called Give Your Heart a Break by Demi Lovato. And the second song is a more um, classical piece and it's Good Night Dear Heart. So Wyatt, for that one, if the second song, if you could turn off our mics and we're going to do it a little differently. So. <laughs>
Okay, so now we're going to watch a quick video that Wyatt is going to pull down for us from the booth, and then um, we're going to have Miss Wilson speak to us. Thank you, guys. Thank you for this opportunity. Now, you'd like to thank God, the one who brought him here, to come and to know our, to know our situation in the foundation here in Yeda. I came from Luma Mountain since 2012. When I came, I reported myself to the education office. So I was teaching in Luba Mountain before I came here. And I told them that I have reached here and I want to get on the education and to continue with teaching. I have been teaching from that time up to now, and teaching is my professional job. I like it and I love it. Here, children, they don't want to school because there is no materials. Uh, teachers, they don't want to teach because no salary. The other thing also, children, as I said, they were moving from place to another place, separation of their, their parents. You will get some of them, their parents have died. You get some of them, their parents, they don't know where they are going. 
So people they scatter it, they scatter. Education here it needs many things to be to be improved. Materials, uh, all types of materials, books, exercise, jokes, blackboards, even classes itself, they need to be constructed. When a child here, he can educate many things. Can it can, can be educated, can be a man of the future, can be a girl of, uh, of tomorrow that can change he or her nation. But when a child is tired at home or, or where he came from, they cannot be educated there because of war. Child cannot get opportunity to go to school. But when he comes here, there is a big opportunity child can go to school. You know, when a person no, when a person is not educated, they not do anything for his community. But when a person is educated, can do anything for his community. Can you everyone hear me? Perfect. The most encouraging quote that he said, and he's actually one of our teachers in Yida refugee camp is, when someone is educated, they can actually do something for their communities. Do you guys agree? Yes? Perfect. And so before I go on, I'm so encouraged by the key club and also the choir that I too want to sing. Can't sing that well, but there's a song in Arabic that when I was young, my grandmother and my mother uh, taught me. So this is my attempt to actually singing to you all. So bear with me, okay? Yes? Perfect, I'm encouraged. Just give me some claps or something. Ana farhai, yesu farani. Ana farhai, yesu farani. Anna Farhat, yes, you fought at me. Hashan Kida, Anna Guna, yes, you fought at me. Could you clap your hands? And so, what that is, is I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad. Woo. Jesus set me free. I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. Mm, Jesus set me free. See that bass? You see it? Okay. So I'm talking about. Okay. Millie whopped you, right? No. <laughs> but no, I'm so encouraged by all the teachers and, of course, my grandparents and my parents uh, giving me the opportunity to actually be educated. So background, a smidge of me is I was born in South Sudan. Now have to be specific because of the actual civil war that happened there. I was actually born in that civil war. And because uh, we had to leave in that, my dad died. He actually fought in that civil war to actually fight the dictator. We left that and uh, went to a refugee camp in Kenya in Nairobi. You guys all know where Kenya is, yes? Perfect, so lived there for four years and mom saw the opportunities for us to actually leave that. So she began her own, uh, actually, um, her own restaurant cooking Sudanese food and raising money for my brother and I to go to Uganda and Kampala to start school. So we left the refugee camp, had the opportunity to go to Kampala and be educated in a British education system, which was incredible. So get this, mom was still working in Kenya, of course, having to pay school fees back and forth in Kenya because school fees is a lot. It's either you eat something or you attend a class. And so she stayed there 
basically working her butt off for us to attend school. She moves and goes to Belgium and Brussels where she's trying to find more opportunities for my brother and I. Now she's in Belgium, we're still in Uganda and Kampala. I have no idea that she even went there. I didn't know where Europe was, I was quite young. Um, so we find out that she's there course she rings us and uh, sends us letters and whatnot. My grandparents find their long lost son who was here in Memphis. Um, he's incredible. He filed for family reunion for my grandparents to actually come to the States. So of course my brother and I only, you know, are living with our grandparents. Mom is in Belgium with now my stepdad who's incredible, but dad died in the war. Yes. So we have the opportunity to come with my grandparents here in the States. And I was given so much, one, opportunities and so much sacrifice from so many different people in my life. So I would not be standing here in front of you if it was not for all those other people that kind of poured into my life. And first and foremost, God, that's all grace uh, because me standing here is I'm not dead. Um, I'm out of a war and I'm out of a refugee camp and I'm educated. I had the privilege and the opportunity to attend ECS, whoop, whoop, right? Is that right here somewhere? <laughs> you say what? Uh, oh, there, there you go. Curdy B, right? Oh, Curdy, right? And so, yeah, I so graduated here in 2012, and um, I will just never forget my English teachers. English is my fifth language. And so, uh, bearing with, uh, well, I knew a lot because I, one, I read a lot of books and I uh, had a lot of different friends uh, from different communities. Of course, now Ebonics is a completely different English. I was British educated and that's, that's another English. You also have the Southern English, yes. There's different Englishes to English. Uh, so I had to bear with that and actually learn that. But I thank my teachers here at ECS because again, I would not be the person that I am without them. I would not be uh, standing here before you guys without the opportunity to want to attend this amazing school. Um, and everyone that kind of poured into my life. And I'm speaking here on behalf of Operation Broken Silence, a, a nonprofit organization that I was blessed enough to be a part of when I graduated from the University of Memphis in 2016. Mark Hackett is the executive director and he actually went to Sudan a few times with a team. So we actually go every two years in the refugee camp. So the documentary and uh, the actually the video that you watched was shot in Yida refugee camp because of our media team. And with our school, the teacher that you were seeing speaking is one of the ones that we actually fundraise for and we support. It's $100 a month for a teacher's salary. So get that, just wrap that around your head, $100. What do you do with that? Every day, right? I mean, food, right? I'm sure you're gonna probably get a really cute purse or some shoes, but that's a teacher's salary in the refugee camp. So. If you have anything, creating a fundraising page is an amazing opportunity for you to empower the Sudanese people, you even understanding what we do at Operation Broken Silence and you being here um, is incredible because now you're educated about it and you know exactly what we are doing back home in Sudan. So again, I wanna thank the choir and also the key club and Mary, Catherine, you're incredible. Um, I slick when I beat box too, but I can't. Okay, I still try to sing um, and hopefully I did not uh, mess up your ears. And this lovely young girl, remember your name? Say Lynn. Yes, so Lynn uh, actually has a monkey. Could you wave it for everyone to see? She reminded me of a pet monkey that I had in Uganda in my grandmother's village. Yes, the stereotype is real. I had a monkey. Okay, yes, I didn't have a cheetah or elephant, but I had a monkey named Abuba, and Abuba means wise old man in Arabic. Uh, I named the monkey that because it actually knew all the languages in that area. So whenever I spoke in a different language, the monkey knew that I was there and it would hop on my shoulder um, and do the most. And yes, it will throw poop at you. That is not false. That is very real. They will do that. But again, I want to thank everyone here, Mary Catherine included, um, the choir and also the Key Club for having me uh, and representing Operation Broken Silence. We have pledge cards that you can actually take home um, or leave here. Mary Catherine would have, will have some. I'll give I'll give her some uh, if you guys want to start fundraising pages, excuse me. Uh, there's another way you guys can also uh, give is by joining the Renewal, and that's our reoccurring donation. Of course, you guys are still students, but if parents, if you guys wanted to give to the education program and actually to the teacher salaries, uh, there's a way you can do that. So there's a Renewal, there's fundraising, and of course, getting educated about what we're doing. Thank you all so much, and I will mill up out here. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely.
So we're going to hear from the concert choir now. But again, I just want to say thank you to all you guys for coming tonight. It really means a lot to me personally that these people showed up. You know, I didn't know if I would come out and there'd be five people out here. So thank you guys for coming. But we are going to hear a song from the concert choir. So I will give the floor to them. Should we go up around? <laughs> I hear the drums echoing tonight, but she hears only whispers of some quiet conversation. She's coming in 1230 flight. Moonlit wings reflect the stars that guide me towards salvation. I stopped an old man along the way, hoping to find some long forgotten words or ancient melodies. He turned to me as if to say, Hurry, boy, she's waiting there for you. Gonna take a lot to drag me away from you. There's nothing that a hundred men or more could ever do. I bless the rains down in Africa. Gonna take some time to do the things we never planned. While dogs cry out in the night, I sing a restless longing for some solitary company. I know that I must do what's right, sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus above the Serengeti. I seek to cure what's deep inside, frightened of this thing that I've become. It's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you. There's nothing that a hundred men or more could ever do. I bless the rains down in Africa. Gonna take some time to do the things we never had. <laughs> Hurry, boy, she's waiting there for you. Ooh. It's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you. There's nothing that a hundred men or more could ever do. I bless the rains down in Africa. 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 Hello. So um, my other key club officers, like Hudson and Zoe, Charlie, if y'all want to join up here. I think this is everybody, right? Four, five, yeah. So um, we just wanted to say thank you and kind of talk about why we were inspired to do this event in the first place. So we are actually all seniors here, and we're the officers of Key Club. And a lot of us have been officers of Key Club since we were even, what, sophomores, sophomore freshmen? Year. Yeah. So we wanted to do something special before we graduate, which is just in a few weeks. And it's crazy to even imagine that's happening. But we wanted to host a night to support a cause that we really believed in. So again, we wanted to say thank you. And we want to talk about what you guys can do. We have a fundraising page, kind of like Miss Wilson was talking about. We made one. There's already a few donations on there, but 
think Wyatt is going to pull the screen down again and show you all what the name of it is. So if you guys get home tonight and you think about donating, you can go to this page and support our cause. And also if, when you're walking out, if you also feel compelled to donate, you can put some money in the buckets. We accept checks, cash, et cetera. So <laughs> you can do that. And then um, any of you guys have anything to say? Thank yous. Thanks everyone for joining yeah. us. Me and, uh, me and Hudson over there have been co-chaplains of Key Club since sophomore year, and every year it gets better and better. So thank you all for coming tonight. It was awesome. Yeah. And I just wanted to say thank you to um, Wyatt and the guys in the booth and also Mr. Smith and Miss Kelly, who helped me do a lot of the stuff in the chapel, everyone from Key Club who donated stuff, everyone who's here, Miss Ring, who's our wonderful advisor, everyone who participated in this event and made it happen. I'm really thankful and glad. So. And if you make a check, make it out to Mary Catherine Miller. Yeah. <laughs> and also, speaking of, Mary Catherine was like the one who like kind of like orchestrated this whole event. I mean, we helped too, but we could give a round of applause. She is our fearless leader. So thank you, MK. Also, we have a ton of food left over. So feel free to grab pizza, Chick-fil-A sandwiches, brownies on your way out, because it's all free. <laughs> Thank you guys, that's everything. Grab some food. Thank y'all. We're gonna have a prayer really quickly. Okay, awesome. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you. Uh, I pray that you would just work in each one of our hearts, that you would work in me to be more generous in everything that I do. Uh, after hearing what Mr. Smith said, I know that I can do more each and every day, and I pray that you would just keep on working in each of our hearts and uh, help us spread your great name. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.